The problem that I have with patience is that it's one of those lessons you have to learn over and over again. And that gets boring. <laughs> Today's lesson, how consumer goods are not always junk just because you can't figure out how to fix them. Hose sprayer nozzles. An endless source of frustration, right? I mean, it's right up there with safety gas cans. Okay, maybe not that high up the hierarchy, but <laughs> these can be a source of frustration. If you remove this valve from this one, it becomes considerably more frustrating. This is a great tip. This is just one of those quarter turn ball valves and it's just great to keep immediately behind any hose nozzle for obvious reasons, just think about it. But let's just examine this piece of rather old technology. Wait, back up a moment. Where our story takes place is in the springtime. I need to start using the hose again and none of my sprayers work effectively. The culprit in this case, a simple O-ring. This design, pretty nice, basic, standard. What's going on here? This little thing plugs up the hole and in doing so, as cone inserts into cone, it causes a, you know, a cone-shaped spray. Overall, pretty solid design. Works great, except that you have to twist until you find your setting, which is why that bypasses the problem. You can find that fine setting that you want and then just quickly go from on to off. But back to our problem here. The source of failure in this case was an O-ring, which I'll show you how you can do this right now and then we'll come back to this. Today's mini project is a drill press project and it's how to make an o-ring using sharpened pipes. These are just random junky pipes that are sharpened with sandpaper or a grinder or whatever method you can use. You can sharpen it so that the cutting edge is on the inside or the outside diameter of the pipe. That's up to you. In either case we'll be using them to cut a piece of eighth inch rubber. It's just some old rubber roofing. Whenever you're cutting rubber use an oil. Oil lubricates it. It makes the cutting way better. Smaller diameter pipe first. I'm going to aim for that spot. I'm setting it there and clamping it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that clip. I'm sure I enjoyed filming it. Well, anyhow, the O-ring just blocks the passage of water here so that when this is tightened, it can shut off. That makes this a reasonably simple design that's reasonably simple to repair. And thus we have the ubiquitous brass spray nozzle. In this day and age, always covered with rubber for those girly hands. Moving on we have a little bit of a more challenging design. Pretend as though this black rubber is covering this knurled part. And so I'll explain how this thing works and you'll say, oh, but of course I would have known that, but you're seeing it without the rubber. So cut me a little bit of a break here because hindsight's always 2020, and I was solving this problem without that piece of information. Back up for a moment before I forget to say this with any nozzle. This is probably your most common culprit here. These little things are dirt cheap, but it's 90% of the time the source of a problem with these things. They always end up leaking here. And even if you use Teflon tape, that won't get you the kind of seal that you need when you're plugging it into a garden hose. So step zero when troubleshooting these is to check that first. Moving on. This nozzle was 10 seconds away from the garbage. I had brought it over to my scrap pile and I was about to throw it away when I thought, you know what, I'm in a patient mood and I can't accept failure. Why don't I understand how to fix this? What were its symptoms? It was leaking everywhere. It just was not functioning anywhere near what a sprayer should. So this is what happens when you first 
try to disassemble it. It spins forever like it's going nowhere, and it seems like, what did they do? Press this into place or something? Keep spinning and it cracks loose. But there's only a little bit of thread. Take a close look at this. How on earth does this thing work? Well, it turns out that it's threaded there, and that thread engages this female thread here, and then when you twist it enough, it locks into place. And then, once it's locked, it starts to spin some, as of yet, unknown internal mechanism that it doesn't seem as though we can get to. But I pressed the rubber off and pressed forward, and what I found was that this neural part has a secret. Those of you who have been here for a while, through whatever fault in your reasonable aspect that you have, know that I'm a puzzle lover. I can't help but be just captivated by any sort of design complexity that has elegance and simplicity to this level. So much so that it exceeded my own understanding of how it could possibly operate. And so I, I take that as challenge accepted. Now in the case of this thing, since it was covered with rubber, this was not a perfect information mechanism. And when I say perfect information puzzle, what I mean is that there are things about this that are hidden from us. There's a popular TV personality out there, and I'm paraphrasing this quotation, but he was fond of saying something to the effect of, if you walk into double doors, because you didn't know which way to go, that's not your fault, that's the fault of the designer. I totally subscribe to that method of thinking. This thing that I couldn't figure out how to fix, I do not fault myself for being too stupid to fix it. I fault the designer for not making it, if not perfectly clear, at least containing some hint as to how it comes apart. Now, you may want to, deba you may want to debate that point with me in the comments, and that's fine, go ahead. But, have you figured out the secret yet? Without much of a clue, what if this were reverse threaded? Oh, the reverse threading of it keeps it from separating whenever this is twisted. And the rubber captures both knurled parts so that this moves as one. So take a look inside. It's really interesting. This threads onto that, but it's reverse threaded. And so this can be removed. There's the o-ring in this case, but that wasn't the problem. The problem was somewhere else. Oh, there's more. Look at that. You may have trouble making it out through the camera lens, but this is a hex bolt that goes into some hex-shaped socket, and we can turn it even more. So let's do that. Now it's threading out, and look what popped out. What a brilliant puzzle. And what an, el an elegant design as well. All right then, what was wrong with it? I have no idea, that's the best part. After it not working for five years and getting kicked around for me to try once again every year, frustratedly, only to find that it still didn't function correctly, when I finally came to understand how the mechanism worked, I could no longer understand why it didn't work before. And so, that's the beauty of this. Stop procrastinating and solve your puzzle. You'll be better off in the long run. It's still in the socket, I can feel it, but I'm backing it out so that I'll have threads to grab later. And now I put the collar on. Remember, it's reverse threaded. And now this, I want as tight as I can get it because I don't want that coming loose in operation. 
and I'm going to grab those teeny tiny threads right there. Got it. I can feel it tightening. And now, we're ready to go. Typically, you'll grab the base of it and grab the whole thing and spin. And as you do, it twists into two separate halves dropping that cone down into the reverse cone and it causes that splay of water in a rotational form. Pretty cool. Okay, now I can cram this back on. This is just soap and water for a lubricant. And in case you're wondering, this nozzle came from a box store. I'm sure you'll be able to find it if you want one. And there it is. Let's hope that it works. Oh, and we're going to add one of these. It's a must. And now that it's in its final form, this should be 100% frustration free. There are quite a few benefits to adding a valve to your nozzle. For one, it virtually guarantees that the nozzle won't drip. And one other thing, as you can see here, you can reduce the pressure, which gives you a whole new range of options. It's a really cool device. What's the moral of the story here? Well, right when you're at that moment where you're ready to throw this at the wall, you're definitely going to throw it out. You've had enough of humanity and these pieces of crap that do, all they make is junk anymore. Right when you're at that moment, I want you to really consider, ask this question to yourself. Is it really the thing? Is it really the consumer good that's at fault here? Does this thing really, truly lack any sort of legitimate, redeemable engineering? Or is it just you and that you don't understand how to fix it? Well, I can't speak for anybody but myself, but in my case, it's usually my own ignorance.